Okay, uh, let's go. Uh, so my, let's say, next topic uh, for today uh, is about, uh, not about technical stuff, it's more about uh, soft skills and persons and people that we are working with. Uh, I think it's also quite important uh, because we are all social. We are all people, we are work together in teams. Uh, and so what uh, I'm going to talk about here, so it's a small agenda. Uh, uh, I will try to uh, let you know uh, how, from my perspective, uh, ideal, ideally organized uh, development projects looks like. Uh, and uh, it's actually based on the truth story. Uh, we introduced all this stuff uh, on my current project and uh, everybody happy there. And I will try to uh, show you how it works, uh, what issues we faced before and how we solve them. And maybe uh, you can let me to give you some advices uh, you can use on your teams. Uh, so here is a small agenda. Uh, and so uh, I try to show you that the topic is important. Uh, for sure, we are all people that I just mentioned. We are not uh, anymore working alone. Uh, our projects are much more complicated to be delivered uh, for only why, uh, by only one person. Uh, we are working together with other people. They are all around us, never mind if they are remote or not remote. Uh, in, the current, in the current times, uh, actually, it's my, much more important in the current remote times for the last year and a half almost. We are uh, more many of us working remotely, and it's tough and it's difficult. Uh, and we cannot even often know all the persons we are working with together, even we, uh, for especially if we start to work with them together remotely. So never been, I never have a chance to meet them in person. So the main point here uh, is to create connections with people. And I would like to show you which way we can do it. So uh, all the people are actually different. Uh, we are located in the different places. We are from other countries. We are all providing different mentalities. We can work in different locations and different time zones. And all of this uh, make a huge influence on our daily life and for sure for our works as well. Uh, and here, again, uh, I would repeat this phrase and so this uh, thought. Uh, so the whole presentation, we can need, uh, we definitely need to build trust relationships between each team member uh, in our teams and not only, because otherwise we cannot do uh, the stuff together. If you don't trust your teammate, you can't work with them. You cannot rely on him, on, on her, and uh, the quality of the stuff will be less. So uh, is the subject is, pretty important, uh, especially for me and I believe for all of us. So uh, why uh, I'm eligible to speak about this? So several words about me, about my background. So who am I? Uh, my name actually Alexey Vasilyev. So uh, I'm staff engineer grid dynamics. It's, it's the moment, but in the past, it's the past, yeah. Uh, yeah, I worked not only as a key engineer, so I, I teach people. I worked a lot with them. Uh, so I teach not only young people, but students, so it's a bit different. I worked as a senior key engineer. I work as a team leader. I work even as a project leader, like uh, delivery manager. Uh, and also uh, now I'm working as a people manager in engineering, like uh, senior specialization lean in engineering manager organization of great dynamics. So I play different roles and I have a lot of experience in different areas. So, but it's not at all, but well, it's not working. Again, please, wrong way. Okay, oh, so two times. Uh, so I also worked in uh, different countries. Uh, when I uh, say worked, this means that I lived there for the quite enough period of time to understand the people's mentality and uh, especially the approaches to people that we can use to work with in those countries. You can see they're all located in different sides of the world like Asia, uh, Scandinavia, Nordic countries, United States and Poland where 
uh, I'm actually living at the moment. So this all countries are different by mentalities and by everything. Uh, also, for sure, I worked with the different nationalities uh, for some of them, with some of them remotely, with some of them not in the same teams. Like for example, with Sweden's guys, I worked in the same team and they have a, let's say quite a different mentality comparing to my Russian one. And so from time to time, it's, it's tough for me to work with them. Uh, but we found the way how to solve such an issue. So I will try to show you how we did it. So, and uh, the last point here is that I worked in the different IT industries and the diff uh, different IT domains like a hardware producer, e-commerce product company, financial service provider, and at the moment in the EM organization. <clears throat> so I think I I more or less approved to 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 speak to you today about this topic. Uh, so uh, let's switch the topic itself. Uh, so. Uh, we have a like a general IT project, and uh, what is the main goal of this project? So, what do you think? It's question to you. So, please try to guess. So, I have a smaller words for you. Okay. What else? Productivity. Productivity. Else? Guess, 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 guess. Please. Fun. 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 Oh, great, great answer. So, I like it. What else? Retention. Oh? Retention. Retention. Okay. It's also interesting. Who? Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's see if you have this uh, your answers on the list. So possible project goals. De deliver project features on time. I think it's evident. So we should do this. Yeah. Provides outstanding quality. So without quality, nobody needs us. We are all QAs, you know. Earn the money. It was a great answer here. Yeah. So please take it up. Uh, what else? Make the world a bit better. So I think a lot of us uh, from time to time starting to think this, that we are delivering something not just for the money, but just to make the life easier around us. What else I have here? Solve the challenging technical tasks. Without this, life is not interesting. <laughs> but it's all, all answers are wrong, and I would like to prove it. So what's the right answer from my perspective here? We just make, we just need to make the customer happy. Because without this, nothing does not make sense. So let's go. How to reach this goal? What we should do? First of all, uh, we need to figure out the customer business needs. So, so customer would like to do something. So even it's a product, uh, product company, like a big guys from business, uh, seeing something in cafes and restaurants, but they don't even know from technical perspective uh, how to implement this. And we have a point two. So we need to transform this business need uh, to technical epics that we actually could develop and implement. So uh, also the technical epics are huge and uh, we could implement the one epic, let's say in the proper amount of time, like days, weeks, or even months. So we need to decomposite epics to the user stories that could be taken into development and deliver it on time. Uh, also, uh, we need to implement this project switches on time that I just mentioned uh, and provides outstanding quality. How we can live without that if you are all crazy. And of the last point, the really important one that I insist on always, we need to create technical documentations that, uh, for each point that we did to allow us to pass our job to the next generations <laughs> of KAs. And not only. I think it's more or less reliable. Let's see. Uh, so to make it happen, we need what? We need to happy team. So without, without happy team, we can do nothing. So, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so uh, talking about uh, development schemas of uh, the projects uh, from IT, uh, well, IT projects actually. So we have three of them, most popular. Maybe we have more. 
But so in grid dynamics, uh, I faced three of them. And I believe in other companies, they are more or less the same, but maybe with different names. So that is why let me to explain uh, my understanding of uh, all these projects times. Let's go, please. Next slide. A bit delay. We need performance testing probably. <laughs> Anna will help us. Uh, time and materials. Uh, so uh, certain people do some work hour by hour. Okay. So what's my main point? We uh, deliver something with uh, some requirements like I listed previously, they are business, but uh, they are not yet like not dedicated, but not specified properly. So they could be changed on the fly, but we are paid for hours. So it does not make less that much change for us. So uh, requirements could be changed at hoc, obviously. Like usual, uh, we are billing people for hours, not for the deliverables, but for the hours, this means. And uh, usually in this uh, working model, uh, customer is uh, aware of the people uh, who are dedicating for them, like in person. So, and uh, here are uh, like uh, pros and cons of this uh, schema are listed that uh, like each person uh, is a front of the customer. So uh, it's uh, really difficult to replace this person there. Uh, but from the other side, what's the pros of this time? Well, really widespread uh, approach. We're easier to plan. It's reliable, stable, and also responsibility uh, is of delivering is on the customer side. It's not on us, it's on theirs. And uh, that is why it's good for the long-term maintenance and support projects. <coughs> Uh, the service model, uh, like something between this and fixed price. Uh, so we are delivering uh, something still uh, not yet properly maybe specified initially, but we're delivering not by persons, but by teams. Let's go, please. Yeah. Uh, we're delivering something in proper deadlines in these models. Uh, our requirements should be strings, uh, strict uh, because we are paid uh, for the team uh, for the some amount of time. <clears throat> so we can, we can change them, but they are not so ad hoc in the time and materials model. Uh, we are building teams for the hours. We are not building persons. We're building the teams. which can allow us to replace some persons inside the teams. And we, we have uh, limited by dedicated team. So pros and cons, uh, team managers uh, by persons, uh, difficulties in planning eyes and cons. Uh, we are uh, responsible for delivery on time. So me, uh, like a team member is, deliver, uh, is responsible. Uh, uh, and customer uh, does not care of each particular engineer customers care of just delivery by this specified team. Uh, so in the last uh, fixed price, uh, during the feature by flexible team uh, and uh, agreed time period. So we are paid for the job that was just did. So during the list of feature in uh, deadlines, requirements should be strict because otherwise it's uh, we cannot sign the contract if he does not know what we are committed to. So proper planning means here. We are billing for the features for the job done, but not for the time. And uh, the teams are flexible actually. So we can uh, even play with not only team members, but play with the team sizes in our budget for sure. So uh, high risk in planning. So if we plan like, for example, signing the contracts, if you say that we're doing in the six months, but we will actually will complete it in a one year, we will fail because we need to pay for the team for the whole year, but we have a budget only for six months. So we are responsible for delivering on time. It's uh, difficult with planning. So I already mentioned it, 
Uh, but from the other side, we have a flexible team management so we can easily replace all team members and also we can increase or decrease side of the team. Uh, and uh, customer does not care of the persons. Uh, and also we can build uh, other, uh, other team members that we have uh, that are not technical persons, they are managers and we definitely need them. Uh, but on the time and materials, for example, it's a really difficult from time to time to explain the customers that we need to build also for the delivery management. Okay, uh, so uh, what, uh, why I talked about this? Uh, because uh, actually the car, this project, uh, this practical one based on the true, true, true story is, uh, is working on the fixed price model. Uh, so why I have this disclaimer here? Uh, it's because uh, if we sign the contract to just for QA, for example, it could be difficult uh, to have the six price model because we have a third party dependencies on other development teams. We, can, uh, we should commit on, uh, for the fixed price project only to the job that could be done completely by one company, for example, by grid dynamics or somebody else. <clears throat> so all uh, stages of the job should be on our side without any third party dependency. Only in this, this uh, way, uh, we could uh, talk about fixed price, but this actually is uh, our example. Let's go next, please. Oh, okay, it doesn't want. Okay, so the best schema. Uh, if you take a, an account uh, into account this disclaimer, so the best schema for the project is, so I think it's obvious, what do you think is fixed price. Uh, I believe I explained uh, because it fits better for the these types of project. So uh, what the project is about actually. Uh, let's uh, deepen details to this project we are talking about. So it's a React Native mobile application for iOS. We need to create it from scratch and to deliver it to customer. It's, uh, it's not like uh, old fashioned uh, Objective-C uh, or even how it's named this language, I forgot. Swift, yeah, it's React Native, yeah, from Facebook. So details you can find there by link. Uh, also, we have technical requirements that we only support iPhones. Uh, we shouldn't support iPads. Uh, like we can also use iOS operation system on iPads, but the clients we shouldn't support them. And also we cannot rotate our devices. So uh, our applications should fit only vertical orientation of the phone. So we have a limit and we understand these requirements, acknowledge them. And so we can do a proper planning. Uh, also as a uh, iOS client for e-commerce platform, uh, we are more or less understand uh, what this application should actually do. So if we talk about e-commerce, what's the main idea of e-commerce? What e-commerce, each e-commerce platform should do? Sell. Sell, yeah. That is why we have all the proper features uh, for the e-commerce. Sorry? Okay. Ah, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, thanks for the reminder. Uh, <laughs> who else? <laughs> so we have passed to product. We need to find uh, proper product on the website. Uh, we need to put it uh, to the checkout stage. We need to apply like different promo codes, uh, buy several amounts uh, of these projects. We have a checkout flow when we can use gift, ca gift cards or MasterCards or Visas or whatever, like discounts, coupon. Also, what features we have, we can chat with the person. Uh, what does it mean here? So uh, this uh, application is not actually only selling the products. We are also selling the services. Uh, for example, we can suggest to person to visit uh, our offline store and create a, a feed 
or good looking of clothes that we could uh, actually buy there. Uh, and uh, this some special person will be assigned to you then, and you can chat via our application with this person if you would like to change some colors of your looking uh, to find uh, another boots or whatever else. Also, uh, if you have appointments, what should we have? We should have reminders. And also we can have push notifications. For example, if we put something into the uh, cart, into the back actually and forgot about that, we can get a reminder in some several days, hours that we put something there. So most probably we would like to buy it. Please uh, commit the checkout flow and something like this. So I think it's scope more or less clear. So let's go next, please. Oh, sure. Yeah, next, this way, this way. Uh, also interesting points here. Uh, that uh, each mobile application should have some backend, and uh, our backend is also on us. It's uh, some microservices, and they are serverless, like a modern technology. So we are using AWS Lambdas, uh, and we are going there. Uh, so what does it mean for us as for testers? That we also need API testing as well. So uh, how project requirements are coming here to us from? Uh, and in which form they are coming actually. They are coming as the user stories. Yeah, and the user stories, uh, what does it mean? Uh, is this means that product team uh, is on customer sites. So they provided user stories. We are not responsible for them. We are responsible for grooming, but we are not responsible for user stories. And also we have design mockups also provided uh, for us by the customer. So designers team are also on their side. So we don't need designers and our teams. We rely on their requirements uh, from Macau's perspective there. So uh, actually now we have all the requirements. We can try to build the team uh, uh, that it's needed to complete all the deliverables uh, listed above. So let's see whom should we have here. Okay. Is, is, is five. So it's uh, more or less uh, um, clear that we sh should have uh, React Native UI developers because if you have React Native uh, mobile client application, we should have backend developers because we have backend, somebody should support it. We should have QA engineers. We should have DevOps. Uh, why we need them? Because we need CI CD for automation testing, and we uh, need to have uh, deployment pipelines for backend, and also somebody needs to build application for us and put it to the proper uh, testing environments. What whom else we need? We need analysts. Why? You can you can ask me why? Because project requirements are coming from the customer sites and already coming uh, into into the stories view. So we most probably not, don't need an analysis there. But it's not completely so because we need to groom and refine the stories before taking them from backlog to the sprints. Because otherwise we could face the issue. So we need uh, the person who will definitely ask the customer about the details that we could provide, uh, that customer could provide us in order to make the story more effective and uh, in proper time, like in the sprint. What else we need? Oi. Ah, the, the point that without DM, nobody could organize all these guys. And as we have a flexible uh, fixed price project, it's not a problem to build him. Uh, that's uh, how actually our team looks like. So we have around uh, five maybe even six UI developers, three backend developers, three QA engineers, one analyst on site, and one DevOps. And also for sure a project manager as well. Also ours, grid one. So here it's listed. And uh, uh, I am uh, showing you the issues already. So we have only one team, 14 people, but they are located in four locations, three time zones. They speak four languages and it's uh, really present actually six different cultures. So I expect issues in communications between these people. So how we 
how we will solve them. So what type of issues we are mainly expect? What do you think? What categories? Communication, for sure. Great. <laughs> Go ahead. Culture differences. Culture differences. Okay. Uh, time zone. Time zone. Okay. Work life balance. Work, whoa, work life balance. Okay. <laughs> Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> story. Who else? Yes, 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 guys. Only five types of issues. Okay, let's see if I uh, if I agree with you. First, language issues. So I think it's obvious because we are all different people. So, how to solve this? What do you think? <laughs> great, great, great answer. So just coding. But what about uh, that React Native is JavaScript based? How can we use Java and write JavaScript based application? For React Native application? If you don't, if you don't like Java. Okay. okay. Ah, hire translators to our team. Oh, oh my god we, we i faced another type of issues yeah okay let's see how we solve this so uh we are forcing english users in international so we are just we are just forcing it but so uh let's ask people to use english if they are not in the same group of people who speaking another one foreign language so if at least one of the persons joins our kind of remote or not remote discussion, we are for sure at the moment switching to English. So no any uh, words uh, on other language because otherwise we can confuse other team members. So what else? Uh, covering colleagues on daily meetings. Uh, so not of, uh, all of us definitely speaks English quite well. So how can we and uh, we have like a daily meetings daily scrums with customer and customers are in united states and they natively english speaking so we cannot use another language so each person should say what was done yesterday what is the, what will be done to, to tomorrow and so on uh, and the initial phases of our project uh, we actually helped the persons who were not really aware of english to say the status instead of them but then it was fixed by the next point. We are motivating engineers to learn to learn English. And now, since like six or maybe not six, even nine months of the project, uh, its situation has changed, improved, and all currently all of our engineers motivating is just uh, putting them goal onto the list that they should teach, uh, not teach, learn English actually and uh, come back to us and check the skills and uh, the skills actually are checking in the let's say fire life mode in front of the customer and this works okay and for sure all documentation is in english so if you don't understand english it's, or don't understand this properly you cannot do your job so we cannot document stuff in russian or in polish or in serbian no way Okay, current uh, culture and mentality issues. Okay, each person forces her culture and style in communication. So it's obvious we are all humans when we do this, doesn't matter if you would like to do this or dislike, it's just inside of us, yeah? So how can we solve this? Uh, we can help the person to adopt to the team. Uh, so we can explain that we are working internationally, we can show the culture difference, uh, we can present the team in different way, we can organize team buildings. Uh, uh, we can, <laughs> calming the other team managers, yeah. So uh, what, what I'm talking about, so uh, if you are um, joining, for example, you are Serbian guy who are joining the, uh, the team consisting only of Polish guys, for example, and you are joining some 
team meeting that is already going and all these guys speaking Polish there and you're joining and you understand truly nothing, yeah? Not maybe like completely nothing, but not everything. So what we can do? So how can we play here in order to don't confuse this person, yeah? So we can check it out this each time that everybody joining, we can pay attention on this and maybe switch language. <clears throat> so what else? Softly guiding the person. Uh, so sometimes guys could be like strictly rude and uh, we should not never ever punish them in front of the team. So this uh, word softly means that uh, a delivery manager or team lead or somebody else after the situation, after the case, could come up to the person and explain the situation and try to and try to avoid this in future. So don't, don't punish people, don't, them, uh, don't say them that they are doing something bad in front of other persons. It could be it could be really tough and it's not effective if you would like to work with this person uh, next time. So you can. You can push, but it's uh, this person will leave you in some period of time. It's just question of time fashion, I think. Uh, and also, uh, if nothing of these points uh, help you, you can uh, replace some person, some engineers on the project, uh, because we work on the uh, fixed price. So we can play with the uh, team sites and with team uh, members. And if nothing help for three months, for example, and delivery is suffer. Uh, even if this person is quite professional, but it's bad team player, we can replace it, which uh, would be probably tough if you work on the time and material scheme. That's how we did. Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. And I will, I will subscribe it later. So uh, body means uh, that for uh, each person that coming, yeah, like a mentor. Yeah, mentor is more technical, but body is about soft skills. So if if you, yeah, our, I will show it a bit later, but I can comment uh, as, as, as I got this like question, so I can comment from scratch. So uh, uh, our team is not huge, but quite big. So uh, one delivery manager could not do everything for them. So it's it's more or less uh, work with the people is a task of delivery manager, but delivery manager could not do this if the uh, team is growing. So uh, our team is split it to uh, small teams uh, based on the specialization and the, each team has leader like this body. And uh, if a new person like a K joining the whole team, uh, body like a team leader uh, is taking care of him uh, on the initial phases of involvement. This house looks like. Okay, by some engineers. Time different issues. So it's it was answer. So how to solve it? So each person prefer to work in that in his time zones or her time zones. For example, like we Polish or you Serbians dislike to work oh, like very late with United States guys. Yeah, no, it's 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 obvious. So what to do, and what we actually did in our team. Go, please. Delay. Where we have performance engineer? Why it's not working? Oh, okay, it's working two times here. <laughs> Great. Uh, so we are scheduling common meetings to the proper time. So we found the window uh, which fits uh, most of our team members. So it's uh, around 4 p.m. So it's close to the, let's say, uh, end of the day of uh, our of short time zones, but it's not that bad that like 8, 8 p.m., for example. So uh, we try, uh, we ask people to refuse uh, meeting invitations from customer side uh, on the late hours, like after 6 p.m. So you are eligible to say that it's out of your working hours and you cannot come. Uh, so uh, uh, each uh, team member, uh, which he is joining uh, or she is joining, publishing uh, their working hours. Even if we are working closely, like Russia, 
Ukraine and Serbia, we have still have time difference, but not that huge. Uh, and but uh, delays in expectations uh, if in deliverables are also expected, but because some person would like to start like 8 a.m. and another one like 12, yeah, like midday. So uh, all team members' working hours are published, and uh, all of us are aware of intersections and could rely on other team members in order to ask questions, invite them to the meetings, and so on. So we are respect as a uh, work life balance as a team members work life balance and it actually works <clears throat> yeah i just mentioned this point uh, and uh, uh, also we are forcing our people to complete tasks of time uh, on time what what does it mean completed time we have uh, two uh, weeks sprints and uh, nobody push you like directly strictly push you to deliver your if you have several stories, you most probably would like to deliver one story first days of uh, uh, your sprint and other last ones last days. Uh, but nobody will force you until the end of the sprint. So you can do everything you would like and uh, say this your status on uh, daily stand up, explain why you're doing so. And for example, deliver uh, all stories by the end of the sprint. Not the, let's say, last moment because we need to test it. But I will explain how we will fix all the, these issues also when we deliver all development stories on the last moment of the sprint. <clears throat> okay, let's go further. So far away location issues. Uh, so what does it mean? That uh, ex uh, except uh, time difference, we also have uh, different locations. Even we, if we are located in the same country, but in different uh, cities, uh, we are not uh, have a chance to meet other each other in person, so we only see fa faces uh, on screens. And uh, it's if it's like long term project, like months or even years, it's not enough. For example, for me, I prefer to meet people in person to build this trust relationships, to trust person to understand what how he is thinking, what she is doing, and so on. Uh, so what we can do is this: we are organizing remote team buildings. What does it mean remote team building? So uh, we have a location where the most of team uh, is located actually and uh, organized business trip for the team members to that location. So uh, it's even work if we, uh, in our COVID times with commit limitations, especially if we have different locations inside white country. Uh, business trips. Uh, so for example, uh, I'm traveling and uh, all other team members are traveling from time to time from one location to another locations in order to meet their teammates and to meet them in person and uh, it actually works and this works good. So uh, I, I feel that after coming back from such a let's say business trip, uh, our uh, way of communications, our way of uh, working together is much more productive. So we uh, starting to understand each other from half of the world. So we should not explain like an hour. So we should not assign uh, another one call uh, to spend another one, actually two hours, one hour of one person and another one hour of second person. We could just say some phrase uh, on Slack or in other messenger and the person will definitely understand what I asking for. What else? Uh, please go ahead, why it's not working. Yeah, lifting buildings. So it's uh, it's the same like the first one, but where the whole team just not uh, uh, meet each other, but uh, facing some events, like going karting or whatever else, doing something out of jobs, like after hours. It was also organized, and uh, the like main point here. So we are uh, paying much more attention to each personality of each engineer in the team. It's uh, really deserves of our DM actually, because without this, uh, we, cannot, we cannot do that we actually did. So we cannot be productive and cannot be fast. So each of us uh, has personal issues, different ones. We, so we can heal, we can have a bad mood, we can, we can have everything. And so thanks for uh, actually our DM who, comes to each person, work with 
with him or with her, we are one to ones, or even to, to, to permit travel, call, ask, and so on. So just be interested in the person's life and the reasons why a person's behave is set. So and it works. I like say I think it's a, one of the main points of our of our daily life. Ah, okay, for our location is again. Please go move ahead. Yeah, customer communication issues. So <laughs> how how can we live without them? Okay, what we have there. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh, again, no. Oh. Okay, problem statement. User stories are not perfect. I already mentioned it. So direct communication with the customer is required. No, it's obvious again. So uh, what we introduced here. So all team members uh, are actually eligible to talk to the customer directly. So we do we should not do it via our DM or even via our team leader. We we are eligible to talk to the people on site uh, from the customer side directly. Uh, so it doesn't matter who is uh, who it is. I, either some technical leaders, either big boss. Never uh, never mind. We could. Uh, write them and call them. Uh, definitely, we should respect their time and so use their working hours, and we actually do, but we can. So uh, we have uh, on-site representative. We have analysts there, which helps us much. So without him, it will be different, uh, much more difficult than now. But we finally have uh, have him, and he helps us much. So he he is in the same time zone, in the same location. And even this remote COVID times, they are joining together, not only uh, in the customer office, but somewhere else. And he could so they could solve all the issues just on the fly. Uh, also, we introduced the practice named Polish session and design review sessions. Uh, so when uh, our team members, our developers, who case, have any questions related to the stories, and this could happen in the middle of the sprint, where you you can groom the stories before taking into the development, but when you took it already, uh, so you can uh, have faced another one question or second, third, and whatever. So in the middle of the sprint, we have a Polish session. So all the uh, our product team, the guys who actually created these stories, and also design designers who created these mockups are joining this and are open for our questions. And also, if you have time on these sessions. Uh, they can represent us uh, uh, like this um, mockups and pictures uh, necessary for other stories in the backlog. Okay, uh, and uh, regular and formal communication like piece by piece. Uh, so we are motivating, not motivating, we are asking actually people. What, what, it's not, ah, okay, that's clear. So just batteries is low, that is why it's working from time to time. Uh, so regular and formal communication, uh, piece by piece, what does it mean? Uh, so we're asking people to join uh, team calls a bit earlier and how it works. If you join like three minutes earlier, somebody also, not all the team, but somebody will join as well and you will have something like one-to-one -one. and you can have some informal conversation which, uh, make you much more closer you can ask about animals weather whatever else and uh, this like a small talk will help you much in communication on business later even if it's customer so it's work the same uh, okay development process issues <clears throat> what does it mean here okay uh so uh we are working on agile so this means two weeks sprints for us uh, this means uh, demos uh, and what else and sprint plannings for sure and groomings but it's like a common approach that should be ad adopted by current team and current project business need and uh, that's what we actually did uh, through the time fashion <clears throat> let's go so should it work? Okay, let's try. Oh, unit test passed. Uh, daily stand-ups uh, for the customer for everybody. So it's it's like an obligation. Uh, so we need to show the, the customer that we are actually doing something. 
we are try we are try to push everybody to present on this meeting, but it's not like a say strictly obligatory. We can delegate our uh, obligations and uh, present something for the customer in front of customer instead of on behalf actually of other person, which was done on the early hours of our project. Uh, but uh, if you communicate to the people you are working for on the daily basis, it also help you and uh, build some trust for you that you are, let's say, uh, meets the expectations uh, and uh, they could uh, allow you more than previously, that's the initial phases. So for example, not strictly uh, ask us to burn out all the uh, story points we are committed to because they trust us that the next uh, few, few, few uh, days of the next sprint, we will finish the stories definitely. Okay, so grooming session, I already mentioned this. It's uh, uh, something between uh, taking uh, stories to the backlog uh, and uh, de de deploying them, uh, sorry, developing them. Uh, so uh, it's a uh, like internal event with our analysts, uh, DM and uh, all the uh, technical team leaders of the team. Uh, when they come and we try to go via all the stories uh, details suggested us for the next uh, for the next sprint one by one and if you ask uh, if you have questions uh, they will be asked to the product team and it's done it's advanced like one uh, one week before starting the next sprint so we will have time to fix the stories if you from scratch see that it's not uh, it's not it could not be implemented this way it will not work this way and so on so forth yeah, yeah. okay uh, so uh, sprint closure and sprint planning session so uh, like one day before uh, closing the sprint uh, we have uh, a meeting between each uh, between all the team team leads uh, so uh, what we can close uh, this sprint actually and what we can't so if we can't we can create uh, like a partial stories. We can copy the current story and move the uh, some undone tasks and uh, take this to the next sprint. This allows us to have the more or less appropriate book down chart, for example. So if some stories are not yet processed somehow, like, like wrong statuses or not yet done or just forgot to process or somebody was ill and so on, we need to adjust the situation and update it on the time. So before closing sprint in front of customer, like officially, we are doing this job. And the same uh, with the sprint planning. So uh, it could be uh, joining with grooming, but not, not always. So it depends. If we need it, we're doing this. <coughs> and uh, for sure, one of the main points, regular retrospectives. And uh, main, uh, what is retrospective of this? I believe anybody knows. So we can discuss uh, all the issues we faced uh, during the last sprint on several sprints depends uh, and uh, create some uh, actions in order to fix them. We can award persons who did something good. We can send like gifts, presents and something else to motivate people to do it like even better than they did. Uh, and also if you find some gaps or problems inside our projects, uh, we can uh, invent uh, action items to fix them. And uh, main point here, we need to assign these extra items uh, on, uh, on, the, on the persons. We cannot assign to the team. Assign to the 14 people means assign to nobody. So we assign to the some persons in, in some in next uh, retrospective, we'll start it from reviewing uh, the future, uh, the previous points, the last points from the last respect tactic, and it actually works. So uh, each person feels the responsibility of doing something if it's assigned personally to him, and it works. Management issues. So manager is overloaded by solving all the issues. I already managed, uh, I already mentioned this. So like 14 people, only one manager and the huge of issues to be solved. So what's, what was done here? Delegate people management to team leads. So like in a half in a year, uh, we are delegating these activities directly to team leads. So team leads uh, are responsible in front of the delivery manager for the teams, for the team, team members. So we are like, for example, I'm a team lead and uh, I, I conduct one-to-ones with all of my teams and uh, pass this 
data to my DM from time to time. But nevertheless, uh, our, our DM is contacting each person uh, uh, on regular basis, but this time period is much more longer, like several months, but not like each week or every two weeks. So the load is less. Uh, account leader meetings. Uh, what, what does it mean? So we are working for the customer and we are not only the one team from Grid Dynamics working with this customer. We have like periodic sync with other account, uh, other teams leaders working for that customers and we are changing our experiences to work with them. So maybe somebody in other projects already solved this issue or know some persons to uh, reach out to solve these issues. Uh, and this helps us much as well. So it's a regular activity like each week or each two weeks. I don't even remember, but it's it works. So uh, it works uh, for achievements. So if somebody uh, do something good, we can, I don't know, buy remotely some gift cards for some shop and present it and do it like together. We will have the common meeting for this and uh, it will be like surprise for the person to be awarded. So it could be small present, but person start to feeling that we are taking care. We are paying attention on the, his achievements and we award them. So this really means even this person is working alone on key location remotely and so on, this really means. And uh, the last point already mentioned, like personal approach to people. So despite of all the issues described above and all the approaches we used, we are, people are people, persons are persons. And that is why we are all requiring like a personal approach of communication. And here team leads and engineering managers and DMs working together. And uh, in our company, we have delivery managers responsible for the projects and we have engineering managers responsible for people growing. And they're working together with uh, each of engineer and uh, they are communicating collaborations between each other and try to help person to be happy inside the team. Yeah, I know. So, uh, so last two slides, I believe. Uh, so what uh, I listed several issues and provided you, uh, provided you by our experienced uh, so solutions. Uh, what's the achievement? So works, it's, it's not works. So I, let me remind you that it's a true story, that it's practice and it works at the moment. So what are our achievements? So the team is actually happy. So everybody, so customers like the team, uh, all the feedbacks requested for the, our team members for our like performance review sessions are truly positive and we appreciate them. And that's also deserves, uh, deserving of our managers uh, and of our relationship for the customers that if we ask them for feedback, they actually provide them. <clears throat> so project uh, first uh, got, got first released. We are already in Apple store. Uh, so we are released on time and the project is continued. So we signed uh, another phase to fixed price and we are developing the same uh, uh, this application next. So we have the next set of features. So uh, a new similar project started. So we signed, uh, we signed the contract for another one mobile application for the same customer and the second, second team staffed. So we get, we get more money for our, for our grid. So we, are, we actually, by our example, we show them how we could work and we earn another one project. And the uh, third one is on stage of uh, signing contract. So we are expecting to start uh, the another one uh, working in the same manner uh, in one month. Uh, so, and our manager scaled herself, yeah, from, from, from one to three uh, actually project. And so this team are working, so we can delegate, we can assign, we can teach people inside teams and we can promote them to new roles. So I think it's a good, good achievement. So main, main, main points to note about your team. Uh, so take care of people, talk to people, to communicate with people, look after people. And so listen to them, listen uh, to everything, every single work they're talking to you and pay attention on this and try to make their life easier. And this, these people will work, let's say for the projects, for you, for the company, and together we will deliver much more effective uh, than uh, standalone. Oh, sorry. 
Take care of her with the candy. Ah. Oh, sorry. I can. Second attempt. Once more. Thank you. So let's make our team happy. That's all. Great time. Uh, we, I have, we have, a, we have time, yeah? Several minutes. Okay. Thank you for the talk and for the sweets. Um, talking about uh, team happiness and productivity, uh, what is an optimal number of team buildings per month required for making team happy and productive? Uh, so uh, by our experience, uh, one team building in two, three months is more or less enough, but it would be better to have each month, but we don't have budget, sorry. <laughs> Else questions? Yeah, so you stated initially that uh, you, your main focus is team happiness and uh, customer happiness. So most probably you need to compare what was before your approaches, before your changes, and uh, what is the current situation. So most probably to compare it, you need to measure it. Uh, did you do that and how? Okay. okay. So uh, I, 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 <laughs> I, I believe we can measure it by the achievements uh, uh, I mentioned previously uh, that what achievements we have. That you see that uh, based on our uh, project approach, uh, we got feedbacks positive, and based on this positive, uh, we got new similar projects started. This means that uh, customer deserves our approach. Customer likes us, and they choose us in front of other vendors and suggest our uh, to our team job again. And also they likes and ask us to use the same actually team and approach. Uh, working on the same project, they understand that it's not possible, but we can try to use our uh, team leaders uh, in initial phases uh, to, to kick off new projects. Okay, that's a good question. You'll be rewarded. <laughs> so in situation when you have to choose between uh, customer satisfaction, customer happiness, and uh, happiness of your team, which one would you choose? It's a, it's a great, great question. So it's a difficult one. And we definitely, definitely need to go in details in the, each case of the situation. From my team leader perspective, as a also engineering, like engineering manager as SSL, I always uh, take first the side of employee, a side of the engineers and try to defend uh, the person in front of the management and this way in front of the customer. I, I would like to figure out what's going on exactly, but I think that uh, the main uh, the main point that we have, so the main, how it's named, uh, capital. Uh, so the main capital that we have inside our IT industry is uh, people. It's actually brains and our experiences. So that is why we need to deserve them, uh, defend them in front of everybody. That's what we actually do. So the answer of your question, for me, happy team first and then customer, but from my side, it works together. So happy team will deliver in the proper way and customer will be happy as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. I... Yeah, great, great. So I'm not the first who said this, so great. So, huh? oh, okay. More questions? Is it all? Okay. Thank you, guys.